Hi, I'm Yumi Steins. And I'm Dr. Melissa Kang. And we are the authors of this book, Welcome to Consent. And today we're going to be answering questions about the book and about consent. So Yumi and I wrote this book for young to middle adolescents, that time of life when you're just beginning to explore romance, intimacy, experiencing some new physical sensations where consent really becomes important, but we actually think it's suitable for children as young as eight. The best way to explain consent to your kids is there is no best way. I'd love to say just buy the book and that will help, but it's actually a really rounded, holistic conversation that needs to be ongoing. Start when they're born, start when they can understand what you're saying, and then keep it up because the information needs to keep changing with them. Now, I know that that is a very unsatisfying answer. So the real answer is, a simple way to um, understand consent is that this body that you own is yours. Nobody else is the boss of it, just you. And sure, people try and tell you what to do with it. For instance, Melissa, put a jacket on, it's freezing. Or your hair smells, you probably should have a shower. So people will try and tell you what to do with your body, but in the end, the yes or no is completely up to you. So imagine that this territory is like a country. You are the prime minister. You're also the sovereign leader, like the king or the queen, the CEO and the boss of it. So what you want for this is all up to you. Look, as Yumi said, it's really about what we call bodily autonomy. So you own, you are the boss of your body. And so, of course, it starts from birth. It, you know, your body belongs to you. No one can do anything to it without your consent or your permission. Now, obviously, when you're an infant or a young child or even perhaps a teenager, it's important that parents or carers are doing things to look after your body. But that's why there are laws in place that prevent them from doing things that aren't going to be good for your body. So no, it's not about, it's not about sex at all. It, it's, it's not about sex, only sex. It's about everything to do with your body, who can touch it, who can do what to it. And you learning as you get older and mature, how to give permission for that and how to have negotiations with other people about that. One of the things that Dr. Melissa Kang and I do in the book, Welcome to Consent, is try and explain consent from a really basic starting point. Um, so that then you can add in the complications of, say, being horny or being drunk um, or you, your first love affair. So we give the example of, can I borrow your T-shirt? So it's actually not about sex or even intimacy. It's about a T-shirt. So how do you have that negotiation about a T-shirt? And what happens when things like the power dynamic changes? So if it's your little sister saying, can I borrow your T-shirt? It's very easy for you to say, no, you can't. But let's say it's your teacher at school wanting to borrow your T-shirt. Does it suddenly get harder to say no? And let's unpack how you give consent in that situation and how you withhold it. So Melissa and I really um, have had a lot of conversations about what the age appropriateness is for this book, but also for just conversations about consent. And basically, it's never too early to start talking about it. I mean, obviously, if they can't understand you, you might be wasting your breath. But you can say things to a baby like, do you mind if I tickle your tummy with my face? And they will hear that you are respecting their choice. They might not be able to answer. Um, but they will understand and start to internalise the fact that it is their right to say yes or no. Yeah, and I think that's something that you can also role model from a very young age. So children grow up hearing their parents and other adults ask permission to do things to their body or to take their things or to borrow their things. So I think what, what's important for parents to do is to start having conversations with their children from a very young age about their bodies. So things like using the correct words for their body parts, trying to, as much as possible, avoid the shame and embarrassment that sometimes comes with nudity or seeing your children playing with you know, their bodies or their genitals. It's a common reaction, I think, for parents to get very embarrassed and sort of shoo them away when, in fact, it's important for them to have conversations about why that sort of touching should happen in private. 
So that's one example. The other is for parents to role model with each other, to, to show their children how to ask permission and how to talk respectfully to one another. Modelling consent is a real learning curve for parents as well as kids. Um, I have gone through quite a learning curve myself in a lot of ways I think as a parent that I know best. So there have been occasions in my life where I've said, it's a beautiful day, I want you to get in the pool. Um, and the kids are like, I don't want to, so I will literally throw them in the pool. And on reflection, that is very non-consensual behaviour and I really should think about what, I, what message I'm sending them when I do things like that. And then there are the intimacies that they might see between you and your partner. So you can say, hey, you look sad. Do you want a back rub? You can ask permission for intimacy with your child. So um, is it all right if I do up your laces? I know you're capable of it, but maybe you need a bit of help this time. So really normalising that you can just chat about what you want and be respectful of their answer on really mundane topics. So that if it does get to be more complicated and a little more awkward, you've got some language in place that you can use that's kind of been exercised. Melissa and I saw a gap in our own learning and a gap in the learning of our children, um, some of whom are adults, um, and we really felt like we needed to fill that gap quite urgently. So I have no beef with the older generations who didn't have books like ours. They just don't have the language for it. And frankly, I think they're too busy to get woke sometimes. They're just too busy trying to, you know, dig coal mines in our beautiful country and destroy Aboriginal artefacts um, to do the reading that they need to do. So I think it's really important for us as younger people than the white male politicians to educate ourselves and the next generations to be educated, given the language and given the tools as well. Um, I'll just add to what Yumi said and say that I spent many years, as you know, and I still work with adolescents, particularly around sexuality and sexual health. And I think, and I, and I have many colleagues who work in teaching and education, and there's a bit of a disconnect between consent being taught at school at a very sort of formal level, this is what consent looks like, and make sure you get it. What, what young people tell me is that they're missing out on that middle part. So they kind of understand in a very general formal way what consent is by definition. But how do you get there, especially in that early adolescent stage when you're really starting to experience new sensations in your body, new emotions, and learning how to be a little bit more independent, you know, hiding things perhaps or wanting some privacy from your parents, but not knowing how to navigate that territory that's a bit fraught from about late primary school right through to late high school. Dr. Melissa was Dolly Doctor for more than 20 years and she's so thoughtful about what adolescents need. Now I am not this credible doctor person, I am just a person with kids of my own who's quite good at communicating to young people. So we kind of wanted to combine our forces to do the most good and this seemed incredibly urgent to have a conversation about consent in a language that young people can understand. We, we really wanted to make things very clear, but also give lots of real world examples of when a conversation about consent might occur and some of the ways that you can fortify your boundaries, give consent, withhold consent, and also find that middle ground of saying, actually, guess what? I don't know if I want to give consent. I don't even know what this is that's being proposed. This is all new to me, so how do we proceed from here? And just showing people that it's okay to like say those words, that if you utter them, the world won't come crashing down and you won't expire and turn to ash from embarrassment. You know, fear of embarrassment is such a huge influence on young people, isn't it? They just don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, well, you know, I, I read thousands of letters and, and emails that were sent to, the, to Dolly Magazine, to the Dolly Doctor column over 23 years. And... They're nearly all signed off with, I'm so embarrassed about this, I'm so desperate, I've got no one I can talk to. Now, I know in reality that young people, of course, will talk. They'll talk to their friends, they might talk to their parents, they'll talk to other trusted adults. But that's what's 
imbued in these letters and questions that they write at that moment. And I think that that's what we're trying to tap into is that terrible sense of self-consciousness, paranoia, anxiety, nervousness, awkwardness, as they're sort of learning, charting new territory. And that's where we hoped to really target this, this book. Are we planning more books in the Welcome series, Melissa? <laughs> Well, if you turn to the end of this book, you will see. Is it? Does it say there? I thought it was a secret. No, it's there. Oh, you're right. You'll have to buy it to see what's coming. Flash, flash. No, we are. Um, there's going to be more books in the Welcome To series. The next one up is about boobs. Welcome to your boobs. Um, and there are also a couple more in the pipeline after that. So we are heads down, bumps up, and it's all very consensual. <laughs> a lot, really. I mean, I, I think what I learnt was that it's very hard to write about consent because it is a big and abstract topic. And in fact, I spoke to quite a few young people and young teenagers, and one of them said, and, and she's quoted in the book as saying, well, we learned about consent in school and afterwards we went around saying, I give you consent for this and I don't give you consent for that. And she said, I don't really know how to put that into practice. And I think what I learned was how to start to help them put that into practice. So, you know, I, I, I know a bit about the law and consent, but I learned more. I certainly read a lot more that my academic colleagues and clinicians have, have written about consent. So kind of filling a lot of gaps for me, but, but I think overall it was just learning how to, how to talk about consent to this age group. I think it also made me reflect on being a parent because I, I have four children, so does Yumi, and I've asked them since, you know, I don't think I did a very good job teaching you about consent when you were young because in the same way I don't think, even though I worked with adolescents, I, I had all the language either. They've assured me that it's all right. What I did was okay. It was an okay job, but you know, it has made me reflect on that. In research for the book Welcome to Consent, Melissa and I have had lots and lots of conversations, particularly with young people. Um, and I really wanted to tap into that teenage group and talk about their experiences with consent, um, what they understood about it and where the gaps in their knowledge were. And what I found, okay, was not, it wasn't about consent at all. It was about how useful they found it to talk on the phone to me and just how it helped clarify ideas that they hadn't really found words for, that they hadn't had language for, and that the mere act of getting on the phone with, say, a 16-year-old for 40 minutes or an hour changed the way that they thought about consent for them. Look, it's a toss up, so I'm going to give you two. One would be start as young as possible and, and really learn, build your own confidence as an adult to have these conversations with young people. But the other is to really think very deep about gender and the, the overwhelming you know, concern that I've had all my whole life really about, about how gendered the whole topic of consent is and how destructive it is that we really still allow our children to grow up in a very hyper-masculine, patriarchal society and how damaging that is for boys as well, not just girls. If you want one message about consent that you can use immediately, what I would say is if you're in an intimate situation with somebody, there needs to be checking in. So it can be with yourself, where you check in with yourself and you try and centre how you truly feel and ask yourself, am I okay with this? Am I happy to keep going? And if you're sure that the answer is yes, then you need to check in with the other person and verbally ask them, hey, are you okay with this? Is there anything you want to do differently? Do you want to slow down? So that sort of checking in is really key to making sure that they are giving consent, that they're happy to be there, and that you've made sure of that. The outcome of asking those questions of yourself and of the person that you're with is more fun. It's a better time. It's never worse, okay? So that's the one thing that I want you to take from watching this.
This is Dr. Melissa Kang. I'm Yumi Steins. We co-wrote this book. It's called Welcome to Consent. It's illustrated and fun. There's heaps in there for everybody. I honestly want everyone in the country to read this book. You can order now from booktopia.com.au. Well done, Yumi. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good at this. <laughs>